just quickly, and I'm sure we'll have a lot more time to talk about this uh, throughout the workshop while you are visiting us at Texas State, but here is the, uh, the sort of um, schedule, the lineup, the requirements for the digital media innovation new degree that we created. And it was originally based on or inspired by the success we'd had with our graduate degree. We've been able to make some changes in our graduate program and have some students go through with a digital media concentration and come out and get some pretty interesting jobs. They were able to move into maybe jobs that didn't exist when they were an undergrad, uh, as undergrads in other programs. And uh, they were maybe even jobs that didn't exist when they started in our program. So the, uh, the basis of this degree is that it's the same core courses that every one of our other majors in the department take. There's four courses at the top, which include a Fundamentals of Digital and Online Media course that we instituted for every student in our program to take a few years ago, just to make sure that everybody had sort of a baseline understanding of the digital media environment. And then the crux of the degree is nine hours one class is a web design class where they really learn HTML and CSS, a bit about mobile and responsive design, and culminate with a bootstrap project and a WordPress project. It's a very aggressive class. Uh, students get a high level exposure to a lot of different things, but then it allows them to move into our program and determine if they want to take electives that are more in the coding realm or the visual realm or both. And then students take an advanced social media and analytics course, and this course was developed by Dale Blassingame, who you'll be hearing from. And uh, they have a client that they meet with, and they do strategy and research and analytics associated with executing a pretty sophisticated social media strategy for these clients. And the final course in the degree is the Digital Media Innovation Capstone. Uh, this class has guest speakers on innovation and we focus on things like design thinking and they end up with a development project that they take as far as they can possibly take it with a new idea that they have about media or interfaces or communication. And we have several classes. All of these have been developed and are being taught. We have a few additional ones uh, in addition to the ones we have here. So we have many that are in the visual realm, we have uh, several in the coding and mobile development realm, and we've also added courses in uh, virtual reality. Uh, and so some of these courses have come out of what is our short course series. And uh, this, these are one credit hour classes that we often do in the format of uh, a couple weeks online and then maybe one day in a weekend workshop, although we have had other formats. Um, but again, just you know, whatever is equivalent to one credit hour as opposed to three, to quickly introduce students to these topics that they may not have had a chance to get exposed to throughout their curriculum. And then it also allows faculty the opportunity to start developing these courses without having to dive right into a full three hour class. Um, my department has been able to give some financial incentives to faculty for doing these things. And so we have had people do short courses in drones and the FA certification for drones. Um, some sh I've done some shorter courses in coding to make sure that students have the opportunity to get some more advanced coding skills if they haven't had a chance to take it otherwise. Um, and then also exposing students to 360 video and virtual reality. We've had short courses in cyber law, short courses in making video for social media. Uh, when we created the new Digital Media Innovation degree, I came up with this digital immersion spectrum. And you can take a look at this in more detail if you want to stop the video. But um, the bottom two lines, the fundamentals of digital and online media and the digital content and sequences, that is assumed content that every single student in our program will get. And then we get more immersed depending on the student. Students can take electives in the digital media program, no matter what their major is. And then the words at the bottom kind of indicate the direction of a career from a digital perspective that somebody with that level of immersion in digital might be able to expect. So somebody who had taken a few electives with a journalism or say advertising or PR degree, they would be able to add a digital perspective to a range of traditional positions. And they might be digital content creators in their organizations. And then as we start moving up the immersion spectrum, uh, students in any degree can get a digital media concentration. That means they take nine hours of selected digital courses. These people might be able to move on to be social or digital media editors or community engagement managers, um, digital content managers, and in some cases they might be able to move into entry level web development positions. And then we get to the highest level of immersion, that is the digital media innovation major. 
And we really expect the people from this degree to be able to move into technical positions in traditional media companies. So maybe being like a news application developer at the New York Times or Washington Post, um, but to also work in media positions at tech companies where they have a really solid understanding of the mission and the goals of a technology company, say like a Facebook or Twitter or Google, but also, you know, in our case, some of the local companies in the Austin area like Spread Fast or Home Away, we've had students move into roles at those companies uh, and have been able to assimilate very quickly because they understood the environment in which they were operating. And then, of course, we want students to feel empowered to start their own companies, so do a digital media startup of some sort. So we really feel like with the digital media innovation major now at the undergraduate level that we have the full stack that we offer. Uh, a range of digital options for every student and that every student that graduates from our program will have um, some level of exposure and can fall into a range of digital media positions. So as you know, I had done the digital curriculum inventory, I have some more information at digitalcurriculum.cindyroyal.net that came out of a pre-conference that I did at AEJMC last August. And I've got um, a digital curriculum inventory that looks at these different areas, digital, visual, social, mobile, data, in innovation, and emerging, and identifies uh, topics that should be covered so that you could go through and see, are we teaching this in our curriculum? Am I teaching this? Where is it being introduced? Is it part of a class? Is it its own class? Do we need to develop a class around this? Do we need to develop modules? Um, how can we get more of these activities in the curriculum. So I encourage you to go to this website and take a look. I have sort of a short version and a long version, so you can take a look at whichever one you want and start to assess where these different topics fall in your curriculum, whether they should fall in your curriculum, and if they don't, how you might be able to get them there. So to sum things up, I guess my best advice for doing this kind of work is don't wait. Don't wait for somebody to assign curriculum innovation to you. And I'm sure I don't have to tell you this because all of you are here because you took it upon yourselves to uh, apply for this program. You have wanted to uh, be better educators, to be more exposed to the digital environment, and this is only going to be a benefit to your students. Um, but I think that there are many things that can be done in an organization slowly if one person starts um, bringing up these conversations, uh, uh, addressing these topics, being the person in the faculty meeting who is always banging the drum of are we digital enough, and making sure that this is always top of mind, that innovation and uh, the changing digital environment are something that you don't lose sight of. So if we return to the topic, the first question of this presentation, is your curriculum digital enough? I'm going to say probably not. Even ours, with all the thinking that we've been doing in the new digital media innovation major, and I'm very proud of the success that we've had, even ours is not digital enough because it is a constantly changing environment. We don't necessarily have um, people that have all the skills they need to have. I don't have all the skills I need to have. I have a list a mile long for every break of things I need to learn and things I need to incorporate into curriculum. Uh, so I'll be at South by Southwest during the week that you're watching this and that's one of the ways that I keep up with emerging topics so that I have a good idea of you know what, what I should be learning. Doing these kinds of things, pushing yourself, always looking out onto the horizon um, is something that we all need to internalize. Now I will say, and I've said this many times before, um, being alone on your faculty as the one digital person is not going to get a program very far. And I've been blessed, I'm lucky, I have a dream team of faculty, people who want to learn new things, who want to bring new ideas into curriculum, and uh, without them and their ideas and their ability to execute on a range of different topics in the curriculum, we would be nowhere. So all discussions around um, hiring, and positions, uh, both professional adjunct lecturer as well as doctoral positions, need to focus on the skills for the future. Again, this is why we have this workshop. 
We want to make sure that people who are on the tenure track are fully committed and immersed in this environment and are able to get on committees like the curriculum committee and the personnel committee and have influence in the future.